Well, good morning again, dear saints. Great to see you today. It is the 4th of April today as we gather. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. And as we begin in the season of Easter, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Alleluia. Stay with us, tw- stay with us for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. Alleluia. The Lord has risen. Alleluia. Just as you told him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, as we jump back into God's Word today as we gather, the psalm for today is Psalm 114. The reading for today is uh, some of, it's the first 29 verses of chapter 11 of Hebrews. And if you know anything about Hebrews 11, there is a term that's going to come up over and over again. By faith. By faith. By faith. That continues to come up. And and through that, we know that God continues to give us this faith. And in this faith, we trust in Him in all things. Well, hear the psalm for today. When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you flee, O Jordan, that you turn back? The mountains that you skip like rams, O hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. Well, those references there in that psalm, as we go back to it, when Israel went out from Egypt, that puts us in a frame reference of the uh, exodus out of Egypt. And when he talks about those waters, what is it in the, that the waters of the Red Sea piled up and the waters of the Jordan backed up so that Israel crossed into the promised land? Well, Israel watched that and saw that and they believed it because they had faith. You see, faith looks at things like that and doesn't say that's a coincidence or that's an act of nature. Faith looks at something like this and sees clearly that it's God's divine governance that did this. That God rescued his people through the water, through the waters of the Red Sea or the Jordan into the land that he promised to give to them. And we'll talk about baptism in just a moment, which again is the same thing. Believing, having faith in the promises of God, that through water and word, God does what he says. Well, listen to this wonderful chapter in Hebrews 11. This is uh, known as the faith chapter because when the writer to the Hebrews puts this together, he continues to walk through these mighty accounts in God's word that can only be seen and believed through faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, though which he was commended as righteous. God commended him by accepting his gift, and through faith, though he died, He still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith... Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place that 
was to receive as an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in a land of promise, as a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has its foundation, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of the sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the promised things, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the land. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they have been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to call the, therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he was prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it is said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of the staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, when he was grown up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, and he was looking for the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea on dry land, and the Egyptians, were that, as they attempted to do so, were drowned. This is the word of the Lord. Well, did you pick it up? It might have been subtle. Yeah, it wasn't subtle at all. By faith, over and over again, as we hear these things, it draws us back to faith. By faith, we believe that God created what's in existence without anything being in existence. He created it all out of nothing. And over and over again, as we go through these great patriarchs of faith, we see what seems impossible. As I was studying this, I found a, a great definition of faith, and it's faith is trusting in God and not knowing why. And that's really important for us, because when tragedy happens, when something happens and we can't explain it, the question that I often receive from people is, if I only knew why, if I knew why God did this, if I knew why God caused this person to get sick and die, then I would be okay with it. Well, we, we like to think we would be better, we would be okay with it. But what happens, the why question is an unbelief question. The why question is always couched in, if I know more, I don't have to trust God as much, and then I will believe in him. And that's why when we look at these events of these accounts of the people that believed by faith, it is an amazing thing because they weren't after the why. Abel, when he offered up his sacrifice, trusted God. He loved God. He offered his first sacrifice because he could and he gave it to God. Cain, on the other hand, did the same. He brought in a sacrifice, but it wasn't out of faith. It was simply out of obligation. You see, faith trusts in the gospel. 
in the promise of God. When we don't have faith, then when we do things trying to please God, it's simply out of the law, simply out of obligation. When we look at Abraham, Abraham was called by God when he was still an unbeliever and God said, pack it all up, Abraham, go. I'll tell you where you're going later. And he went. Now you and I might, might be able to, to believe that or to do that if somebody said, I want you to move and we knew where and we knew why and we knew all the things we were moving to, we might be able to do that. But to just say, pack it all up, I'll tell you later, I'm not sure we would do that. Abraham, when he was told to go, went. Abraham and Sarah, when they were told to have a son, they looked and they knew the biology. Abraham, 100, Sarai, 99 or so, never having kids before. She was barren, no kids. You're going to have a son by this time next year, Sarah. And she laughed, maybe out of unbelief. Maybe out of just, uh, now I get this great pleasure when I'm old, who knows. But she laughed. And sure enough, what happened a year later? God gave them a son by their own bodies in the bonds of marriage. Abraham and Sarah, and they gave birth to Isaac. The story that always gets me, the account of Abraham and Isaac, when God said, take your son, your only son, and sacrifice him. And Abraham did. Can you imagine the one that he loved, his own dear son? No closer relationship than that. And God asked this of Abraham. And by faith, Abraham would do it. Abraham expected, believed, that God would raise his son to life again after he sacrificed him. Now, without faith, we might look at that and say, well, let's just skip the whole thing and leave the son alive. But out of obedience, out of love for God, out of trust God, out of faith for God, Abraham said, yes, Lord, I will. Now the angel of, uh, the, angel of the Lord came and stopped Abraham so that he didn't sacrifice his son, provided the ram in the bushes that he sacrificed. But we know this story plays out much later. In fact, we just saw it last week. That God, the Father, would sacrifice his son, his only son, the one that he loved, and he wouldn't push him aside. He wouldn't let that sacrifice go because Jesus is the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. God's son, Jesus, would be sacrificed for us, for you and me, for the forgiveness of, of our sins. And just like Abraham promised or believed that God was going to raise his son Isaac, So we see that in the story of Jesus, crucified on on Friday, as was said, rested in the grave, and raised on the third day, back to life again, to give to us the hope and promise that our sins are forgiven, to strengthen our faith, and to remind us that God is with us always, and that he does keep his promises. We could keep going through all of these. Moses, when he was born, drawn up out of the water, was protected. And we keep going down through faith. We see God's people, Israel, passing through the waters. By faith, we believe. Uh, If there's a verse in, in Scripture that I quote a lot, it's Hebrews 1. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Now, if you wonder what the difference between faith and hope are, Someone described it to me this way. Hope is always in the future. Hope, I hope the weather is good next Sunday. Or I hope I do well on this test. Or I hope the stock market stays up. Where faith is based in the present and the future. Faith is believing the promises of God right now and being okay with not having the answers. By faith, We believe that water in the word washed over someone's head will bring faith to them. By faith, we believe that when the pastor says the words of institution, this ordinary bread and wine, now Christ attaches himself to it. And this is the real body and the real blood of Jesus given and shed for you as we take it into our bodies. By faith, we believe when we pray, God answers. By faith, we believe that when the words of, insti- uh, the words of absolution are spoken, 
we are forgiven. By faith, you and I will one day rise and be with Jesus in a place that has no more sorrow or or sadness or death. By faith, in Christ, you are saved. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He's risen indeed. Amen. We're finishing up today in the last section of the Lord's Supper in our catechetical review. Who receives this sacrament worthily? Fasting and bodily preparation are certainly fine outward training, but that person is truly worthy and well prepared who has faith in these words, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared, for the words for you require all hearts to believe. Even there in the Lord's Supper, we have the faith that God has given to us. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given us faith. Faith to trust in you without the why or without the answers. But knowing that you will keep your promise and continue to work all things for our good. We pray, Father, you would strengthen our faith, that we may continue to trust you even when our path is dim and our road is rocky. Hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Well, dear saints, go in his peace. I look forward to visiting with you again tomorrow. God's richest blessings.